All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing brain and spinal cord stuff. So what the plan is probably the next video or the one after that, I'm going to post a midterm. And the midterm will basically cover everything we've learned so far. And I'm going to give you practice questions, something you would see on an actual midterm. So doing this, I would, you know, I would suggest doing the midterm for real. And then that should be that. And I'm going to go over the answers and whatnot. And that should really prepare you to get an A on your physiology midterm. So let's start. We're going to do the brain first. The brain can be basically broken up into four lobes. The four lobes are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. The frontal lobe is this red part right here, this red part. And the frontal lobe is for movement. So any bodily movement you're doing, say you want to move your arm, you want to move your leg, all the info needs to be is processed in the frontal lobe. So this area right here. In addition to the frontal lobe, there's actually something called the prefrontal cortex. It is kind of basically part of the frontal lobe, but it's not like, it's not like, how should I say? It? It's not for movement, funny enough. The main frontal lobe is for movement, but the prefrontal cortex, which is actually like this part right here, that part, so like I'm saying like this part, that's the prefrontal cortex, so prefrontal frontal cortex. It's not a lobe. And this is for judgment and emotions and thought, for example. The next lobe is the parietal lobe. This lobe in blue is for touch. So whenever you feel something on your fingers, for example, any anything relating to that, um, if you feel something on your leg, if you feel something in your back, whatever, any kind of touch, it gets processed in the parietal lobe. The next lobe is the temporal lobe, which is the yellow part. That is for hearing. So anything you hear it needs to be processed in the temporal lobe. The last lobe is the occipital lobe in the back, the green. That's for sight. So anything to do with, you know, whatever you see needs to be processed in the occipital lobe. So I know this is, um, this picture is, you know, of the brain is from the side. So the frontal lobe is actually, yeah, it is part of your front. Like, you know when people say, um, oh, I have a headache, and they point to your head, right? They're pointing here. Well, above that will be the basically the frontal lobe. Behind that, towards the back, is the parietal lobe. Towards the very back of your head is the occipital lobe. And to the sides, right above your ears, is the temporal lobe. Okay, now to spinal cord stuff. There's something you really, well, you'll be 100% tested on, but there's something called sensory information and motor information. Okay. Sensory is meaning you need to sense something. How do you know you're feeling pain? How do you know if something's hot? You're sensing that. Motor is actually moving your piece, your, your body part or whatever. You move your arm, you move your leg. So there's two, it's divided into two sectors, sensory and motor. There's some, so we're going to go over a very typical pathway here. And what I want you to remember is the abbreviation SAD MEV. It's a stupid abbreviation, but I think it really helps. Uh, it's a guy named MEV, and I guess he's sad. I don't know, whatever. What this stands for is 
sensory, that's the S, afferent, I'll explain what that means, dorsal, and then motor, that's the M, efferent, ventral. Okay, what does this mean? So I have a leg, I drew a leg here. This is just for example, and we're gonna go over this little pathway here. So say your leg, you kick, oh no, you don't kick. Let's say you, um, let's say a bee, a bee stings you. Okay, a bee stings you, it comes along and stings you. So let me, um, I am, uh, okay, he comes along, and you know, he stings you. <laughs> Looks like a fly. Um, he stings you. This sting sensation or the pain starts from your leg, right? Because that's where, that's where it happened. It's a nerve. You're going to have a nerve here. And it's going to go and enter the spinal cord. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a little thicker. Because that you can't really see that. Let me draw a thicker. Okay. Your bee stings you. That that neuron in your leg is going to send a message to your spinal cord. It's going to go all the way up to your spinal cord and enter the brain. Whatever, enter the brain. Okay. It enters the brain. So you sense something, right? So that's sensory. Right, we sense the bee stinging, that's sensory. Afferent means enter. That's another way of saying enter. So we entered the spinal cord. Okay. The dorsal part of it means it enters the back of the spinal cord. Dorsal, think of it like dorsal fin on a dolphin. That's located on the back of the dolphin. So it enters the back of the spinal cord, or the, the dorsal root of the spinal cord. Okay? Now, our brain processed that, right? We, we felt that sensation. It processed in the parietal lobe, because that's for, like, touch, for example. And it... It's basically going to process, and it's going to go move into the, the frontal cortex because we need to move our leg now. So we get the message, okay, we need to move our leg. We need to basically shoo it off. Don't kill the bee. bee don't, don't ever kill bees. They're, they're lovely species. We need them. <laughs> but, you know, you're going to move your leg. You feel pain. So the message is going to go down from the brain. It's going to enter the spinal cord. It's going to exit the spinal cord. And then go to our leg and then make our leg, you know, move. So notice, this is our motor neuron, okay? The motor neuron goes from the brain down the spinal cord to our leg. So we got motor. Efferent is another word for exit. So it exits the spinal cord through the ventral root or the front of the spinal cord, okay? Don't worry about this picture right now. We're gonna go over that in a second. So sensory neurons always start at whatever organ we, we're sensing something from. It doesn't start from the brain. The sensory neurons always start at some kind of organ, your arm, your leg, your back, whatever, somewhere, that's not your brain. That always goes up the spinal cord. It enters the spinal cord through the dorsal region or the back of the spinal cord, the dorsal root, and goes to the brain. The motor neurons always, always start at the brain. Okay? Motor neurons always start at the brain. Then they enter the spinal cord. Then they exit the spinal cord out the ventral root or the front side of the spinal cord. Okay, now this right here, now we're going to get into this. This is the vertebrae of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is divided up into sections. 
the first seven vertebrae are the cervical vertebrae. And there's seven of them. So we call them C for cervical. C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So each of them are seven. The next set are the thoracic vertebrae. We abbreviate it as T. T one through 12, there's 12 of them. Then we get the lumbar vertebrae. L for lumbar, and there's five of them. Right after the thoracic vertebrae, there's the lumbar vertebrae. Now this is what a lot of people forget. There's the sacrum vertebrae. Rather, it's not the, they're not actually a vertebrae, just part of the sacrum, but it's S one through five, S being sacrum. And then we have the coccyx at the very end. The coccyx is the tailbone. Humans do have a tailbone, but they're not prominent. Uh, it's said that throughout evolution, as we evolved, the tailbone became more internalized. But it was said that back a long, long, long time ago, we had a prominent tailbone. Okay. So this is one of the vertebrae we're looking at. What this is saying is that we have, you know, our nerves here on the left. The yellow stuff is our nerves. And I want to tell you the pathway for specific stimuli. If we are encountering something with touch or vibration, we're going to get this signal, right? We, it senses, so we're sensing something. We're going to enter, right, the dorsal root, as we said, right, the dorsal root we enter. And if it's related to touch or vibration, we go straight up to the brain, okay? If we are feeling pain or temperature, like, oh, something's hot, or uh, someone stings us, for example, or, I don't know, you got shot. That's very grim. <laughs> okay, something like that, okay? We go, nor our... I just lost my headphone. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> my head, my AirPods just dropped. Okay. We are entering the dorsal root like we said, like usual, right? Dorsal, sensory, whatnot. Same thing. But this time, we're going to cross our vertebrae. And then we're going to go up our spinal cord. Okay? So, there's a fancy name for this. So, let me rewrite this over here because it's like... It's um, interfering here. It's not interfering. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's all messy. Okay. So we did purple. Okay, so purple. So if we have touch, oops, let me know. Say we have touch and vibration. This uses the dorsal columns. Still the dorsal root, right? That, that That's fine. What we call... The, the, the same side is dorsal, right? Where this is like the dorsal horn, okay? This area right here, this section right here is called the dorsal horn. So we go inside the dorsal horn and we use that basically to go up to the brain. So we use the dorsal columns and this is for, um, it's called, what's the name for this? This is called Ipsilateral pathway. Ipsilateral pathway. Okay. Now, if we have pain or temperature, we do go through the dorsal horn, but we pass through it, right? We're, we pass through it. So we're not using, we entered we did enter to, you know, we used the dorsal root. We entered that. That's fine. But we're not using the dorsal horn to go up to our brain, okay? We're crossing over. We're crossing over, and we're going up from there. We go diagonal, then we go up. Okay, so we have pain and temperature. This is called the anti- 
anterior lateral rather tract. Okay. So, the pain and temperature route uses the antilateral tract or pathway, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let me just keep it the same. Okay, pain and temperature use the anterolateral pathway, and the touch and vibration, you know, part they use the ipsilateral pathway, or use the dorsal columns. I understand this is like really tricky. Uh, it could be really tricky. Some of you may get it. Some of you may not. Um, this was a uh, honestly. I want to be really honest with you. The this part right here is one of my least favorite things in physiology. I love everything else. I love the spinal cord, like other like sad mess stuff. I love the brain, right? Sensory motor. I love that. But the actual anatomy of the spinal, you know, vertebrae, I do not like. It's annoying, but hopefully this makes sense. Um, so let's go back to the brain for a second. I'm gonna give you some scenarios. Say you took a baseball bat and you bludgeoned someone. Okay, it's, this is this is a grim. Okay, this is this is violent. Um, whatever. I, I don't know what else to think of. And you bludgeoned someone, and you you basically targeted their prefrontal cortex. That's what you damaged. That person you just hurt will no longer able to have any emotions or judge, you know, be able to make critical thinking decisions. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's, all, it's horrible, but it's interesting. So if you were to bludgeon someone in the prefrontal lobe right here, they won't be able to move. If you, if you bludgeon someone here in, you know, in the temporal lobe, they won't be able to hear anything. Same with sight. If you hit someone in the back of the head, they won't be able to see. Funny. Not funny, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. Here's something even interesting. Say you managed, somehow, you managed to hurt someone in this... Yeah, I didn't know. Wow, that's the wrong color. Um, like, right here. This is the gustatory cortex. If you hit someone here... They won't be able to taste anything. It's quite interesting what uh, what damage you could do. I say that in a very okay. Don't listen to me now. <laughs> um, if you um, if you find this helpful, uh, please like and subscribe. And like I said, probably the next video, the one after that, will be our midterm, and I'll create a lot of questions. You guys can, you know, go over it, try to answer to the best of your ability, then I'll go over the answers, and then you're going to get an A on your first midterm in physiology. Then we're going to continue doing this for the second midterm, then we're going to have a final, and then that will basically conclude the physiology section of my YouTube channel. Then I want to move on to another subject, whatever that may be. If you guys have any recommendations, go ahead. I might just do biochemistry. I might do organic chemistry, I might do physics, I'm not really sure yet. But whatever it is, um, yeah, thank you. And I'll see you guys soon. Later.